Hey, what's up? This is Will with Collective Soul. You're watching Sonic Perspective. This is Scott Medina with Sonic Perspectives. Will, thanks for taking a moment to talk with us while you're on tour with Collective Soul. Yeah, man. Uh, just another day at the office backstage here in Clearwater at uh, Ruth Eckert Hall. Nice, nice. Yeah, you guys have been on the road for a little while now. How's it been going? Going well. Uh, this this uh, tour is us and Switchfoot. Uh, it's something we've talked about and uh, imagined for a long time. Uh, just being fans of their music and, and vice versa. So uh, it's, it's going real good. We're, we're at the, we're in the last third. I'm trying not to count the day, so to speak. Uh, yeah. I like to be in the moment and live in the moment and enjoy what's going on. But this was uh, 52 shows in 72 days. So Woo. <laughs> and that's with a week off in there at home. So when we're actually on, it's been five days a week and pretty mm -hmm. grueling, but uh, something that I, I'm, very uh very glad to be a part of yeah yeah so when you come back from that week off at home how is it for those first couple of shows when you're back are you like re-energized even more yeah. or is it kind of like oh how did we get back to this yeah you're definitely re-energized um and i you know i went home for a week but i was behind on projects uh at my studio real to real studios so i was pretty busy at home too but you definitely get re-energized um it doesn't take much. It's like, it's one of those things where like when you've been on tour for a while, you start counting the days when you're going home, you're looking at that plane ticket home, you know? Um, yeah. And then literally you're home for like eh, about three or four days. You're like, yeah, I'm ready to go back on the tour, you know? Uh, so I try to keep it in perspective, know that I'm a little tired, but uh, enjoy every moment and, uh, and be appreciative of, of what, uh, what we get to do for a living. Yeah, totally. And when you finally finish the whole tour, I mean, is it a big uh, just exhale and, and relief and, and gratitude for a while? Or is in like a week again, are you itching like, yeah, I could do some more shows? Yeah, no, it's definitely like the relief, gratitude. And, and usually it, the timing is around fall, right? We get home from a busy summer around October. And, and that's just Georgia. And I'm, I'm, I still live in Georgia. So that's just a it's just a wonderful time to be home knowing you had a successful tour you're back with family and you're watching football and you're enjoying clean clean crisp air of georgia you know not the summer not the summer georgia the fall <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, they 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 timed it well for you didn't they it seems to work out that way every time we're busy in the summer yeah sweet and with these two bands you know touring both you guys now is that What's the audience like? Is do you find a lot of the crowds there for both bands, or they, like you can tell where the the fans are for the different ones, and then you kind of gotta win them over too? Yeah, I mean, there's some hardcore fans, but I mean, I think Switchfoot and Collective Soul is an obvious combination that would you know fans from both bands are gonna be, uh, you know, they may not be their favorite quote unquote band, but. Uh, it's it's right in line with with uh, with each other's vibe and music. It's been it's been a fun combination though. Uh, the the California boys and the the California surfing boys and the wild eyed Southern boys. You know, uh, yeah. it's been fun. We we've had fun with them. Yeah, you got the the whole whole ends of the country well covered there. So yeah, man. Cool. Yeah, we're showing them how to do things like uh, what we we show them how to th throw cornhole bags and stuff like that, and uh, they're showing us how to surf. So yeah. <laughs> right on <laughs> you're showing them how to drink pretty good too oh, okay yeah it's going that way right have you actually gotten out on on some surfing during the tour itself no but we were in jacksonville yesterday and uh and the boys the switchfoot boys did go out and catch some waves right on yeah nice and what's uh what's the scene been like from your perspective on the stage like in the crowd in this you know post-pandemic kind of world how is it different than when you were out there in, you know, 2018, 19. Yeah, people are excited to see live music. Um, 
it's good to see that vibe. But I will say there is a little bit of, and of course, this is partly uh, part of this equation is the fact that everybody and their brothers out on tour this summer. Um, if it wasn't a tour they planned for this year, it was a tour they canceled last year or a tour they canceled the year before that. Yeah. Um, but everybody's totally enthusiastic, glad to be out uh, and, and enjoying live music. For a lot of people, live music is, uh, is part of their, it's part of their thing uh, that they, you know, that they need to survive. Just like, uh, just like us, we need it. We need to perform live, but we also need to get in the studio too. So we got that, that dual, that duality. But um, yeah, people are, people are back and enjoying it. Mm. So it's good to see people's faces, good to hear people sing, good to hear the vibe where nobody's worried about so many things, you know, and I, and I get it, but, but it's good to just uh, forget about all those things and, and go to a rock show. Totally. Yeah. And speaking of the studio, I mean, you guys have been busy and, and very successful, you know, now with vibrating and blood before that, I mean, you guys are, are keeping really relevant, I'd say with just churning out excellent music. So it, it must feel good to uh, be strong in the studio as well as on the stage. Yeah, thanks. Uh, we're proud of the record. We're, we're, we've always been a, a creating band. You know, we grew up in the studio. We're, we're self-proclaimed studio rats. So um, it is interesting to be, you know, 28 years later. And, you know, some of our peers can't really get in the studio and create a lot of albums, but it's still flowing off of us. Like, uh, I mean, the, 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 the spigot is pouring plenty, man. We've got Mm -hmm. two projects right now that are getting scheduled for release in the next year and a half so we haven't finished either one but yeah, yeah. but you're in process wow yeah. yeah and how's that um impact you also for you know your solo material too you know you've come out with some solo releases how, how do you work that in and you mentioned that you know even on that week break you were pretty busy mm-hmm it's it's it means I record a lot of the ideas that come to me on my iPhone and I don't really have time to manifest them yet into uh, into things. But, yeah, I've got another got another batch of songs that, you know, when I do my solo stuff, it's it's mainly music that was created behind a piano, uh, my first instrument and and uh, probably a little more poppy and funky than collective soul. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's good to have uh, the, the dual the dual thing going on and be able to go create outside of collective soul as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's great to live in those two worlds, you know, really solidly. What's, um, what's it been like for you? You know, you've been here throughout the whole history and you've had some other drummers, a few different drummers change o over that history. What, what's been your experience, you know, in the rhythm section there, just rooting it down um, in, in those changes over the decades? Yeah. I mean, uh, been blessed to work with some really good drummers. Um, you know, our original drummer, Shane Evans, he had a style and a thing that was, um, you know, when you listen to those records, it was, uh, it was evident. And he, uh, he was, we were all best friends, right? The original collective soul, we all went to the same high school. We were best friends. So yeah. uh, those years being able to, you know, grow up together, go to high school together and then tour the world together. That was special. Uh, and, and then, and again, on a musical level, Shane's a, an amazing drummer. Uh, and then Ryan Hoyle, uh, that was, uh, Ryan was awesome. A little bit different style, but a student of the game. And with Ryan, it was fun because we, we would, um, we would talk a lot, visualize, uh, and talk a lot about how we were going to, uh, approach the music as, as opposed to X's and O's and technical things. Me and Ryan got really, um, really uh, ethereal into what music really is. It's, mm -hmm. it's basically boils down to an emotion when it, when it hits, hits somebody, you know, obviously there's frequencies vibrating uh, and they hit your eardrums, but, but what does it do to you? Is it, is it X's and O's that really make you feel a certain way or make you feel happy, sad, make you conjure up a memory like it was yesterday. Uh, it's, it's really just raw emotion. So me and Ryan would get into, into that ethereal type of what is the power of music. And, and that was fun for me too. Um, but now the lineup we have now, um, it's, it's really, uh, it's really, it feels, it feels right. Uh, this, this, we're going on almost 10 years. I think uh, Johnny, this is, 
this is Johnny's 10 year. This is mm. Johnny's 10 year run. So uh, it's been working with Johnny Raz been a blessing. Uh, and it's, it's kind of a combination of those things. Uh, we talk about things and, and yet he's, he's got this crazy style that nobody else has kind of like Shane, like nobody had a style like Shane. Nobody has a style like Johnny Rav. And that's cool because it's easy to make it sound just a little bit different than everybody else, you know? Mm. Um, and yeah, man, I just, that, that is my role. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely the guy who makes sure the rhythm section's doing the right thing and, and becoming the glue for uh, all of the rest. That's kind of my main role with, with the band. Yeah, right on. How, <clears throat> since there's, you know, all, all that history that you got and, and the mark that you made decades ago, how do you guys uh, work out how much, you know, of this new material to bring in to balance it out, especially in the live set? It's a good, good position to be in, to not be able to play all the music that, you know, fans will want to hear. Um, <laughs> there's no set way on how we do it. We just start jamming. And, you know, look, there's, there's a handful of songs that we're not going to leave off the set list. Sure. Um, but that being said, there's number one rock tracks that are not on the set list tonight. You know, December's on there, Shine's on there, World I Know's on there. But um, listen off of Discipline Breakdown, number one rock track. It's not on the set list right now. You know, so uh, it's a good problem to have um, when you're on a dual band bill. Uh, yeah. That's a good thing too, but uh, your set list gets a little shorter because right. we're both sharing the stage. Um, so uh, yeah, man. I mean, how do we decide? Uh, we just start playing songs, and we just look, man. It's it's also about the ups and downs of the set list. So sometimes it can be more about what type of song do we need in this moment than which song uh, specifically do we want to play. Mm. Um, but uh, it's it's a quandary that'll never end but it's a good it's a good it's a good one to have yeah yeah i just you know i want it's different for every band and kind of depending on their um their fan base you know how um how receptive they're going to be to a new album no matter you know what the quality is it's like you know some bands will release a new album and literally not do anything off of it in in concert because they got such a big you know mm. history and back catalog other bands, you know, even like Rush will like do their entire new album in concert. And, you know, anyone who came just for Tom Sawyer is gonna be scratching their head, but you know, they've got enough fans that are like dedicated enough that they're happy about that. Right. So I just wonder if you're ever in that place where, um, you know, you come out with like a strong album, like, like vibrating and it's just like, we love this album you know we want to play yeah. like 80 percent of it like do you think you could ever like go for that or is it just like no that just i think we could do limit like for a, the set list time and yeah i mean all those all ideas are fun to talk about i mean what if we did like a tour where it was everything released after 2010 huh. or, yeah you know, <laughs> some concepts like that would be fun to work with or what if we did a tour that was you know the atlantic years only you know the first cool, seven yeah. records, you know that's, that's a good idea those, those would be concepts good concepts and of course everybody has done the entire album concept but uh sure. yeah that would be cool to kind of do an era i think that'd be cool um currently we're doing only three songs off of vibrating and mm -hmm. that's about as most but the most we can squeeze into a right to, to the restricted set list yeah yeah exactly no that's fun um so you said you, you guys already are working on the next uh, projects coming up. And so it sounds like you've got a good trajectory ahead of you for the next couple of years, at least, right? Yeah, we're going to be busy putting out a lot of stuff. We're kind of currently in production with the uh, the quintessential Collective Soul documentary as well. So that'll be a big piece. Um, yeah. People know a decent amount about the story, but you don't really know until you really dig in there and you watch something like, um, like the true, um, uh, you know, true documentary of where we came from, who we are, and uh, and, and how we get along. <laughs> right. And what are you looking most forward to, just yourself personally, in the next coming year? Um, I, yeah, uh, the, I guess the most fun project on the horizon would be, uh, we, we met a friend of a friend who owns Elvis's Palm Springs house. Mm -hmm. And it's been untouched. He's got somebody there keeping it up. 
Um, but we went and saw it last year and hung out, swam in the pool. Um, but it's, it's untouched. I mean, a lot of the stuff, the red room, the red carpet, all the stuff's still the same. So we have convinced them to let us record a record there. And so in January, we'll be at Elvis's Palm Springs house. And we're going to, we're going to ask some, uh, maybe ask some friends to join in and do some, um, do some collabs on some Elvis tunes and, mm -hmm. and maybe have a small little, uh, maybe five song, uh, little five song EP of, of some Elvis tunes done by collective soul and friends. Oh, wow. And I'm sure we'll work on some other original stuff as well. Mm. <laughs> that is fun. All right. Good way to spend. Yeah, your it's going to be awesome. Oh man. Yeah, man. I, we got the whole month of January. I think we've got, we've got one hootie fest is down in Mexico. So we got that. That's a four night uh, excursion down to Mexico, a uh, big festival with some of our friends, longtime friends, that, you know, the names who, oh, yeah. Jen Blossoms, Everclear, they'll all be there. Sweet. So those are good, fun things to be a part of also, because, uh, especially our buddies in, in Hootie and, and Jen Blossoms, we get to look at each other and go, Whoa, dude, it's been almost 30 years, you know, <laughs> but we have fun playing with all those people. And it's, uh, it, it's something we look forward to. Oh, that's great. Cool. Anything else you want to share with folks right now? Uh, check out my studio, check out real to real studios. Uh, it's in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, my mm -hmm. father opened it in 1976. Uh, the new location was built 2000 or finished in 2002. Um, and it's where collective soul came from. And, uh, I'm currently owning and operating the studio there. So I'm, I'm there a lot and I've got it renovated and updated. So, uh, anybody who's interested in recording a record, come check it out. Oh, sweet. Um, that's fantastic. Yeah. Thanks for dropping that news with everybody. Sweet. Will. well, thanks so much for spending a little time with us. Enjoy the rest of your time down in Florida and beyond. Yeah, man. Thank you. Thanks for your time as well. Yeah. Great talking with you. Yeah, man. Cheers. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. If you haven't already checked them out on the road, still got a few more dates. <laughs> there it is. All right, sweet. Thanks. Take care, everyone.